Who treats scoliosis and can it be treated? Scoliosis is often described as a very complex condition, and there's many reasons why it's referred as a complex spinal condition. The first thing is that not only can it affects the normal healthy curves of the spine, meaning that the normal sagittal view, the side view of the spine and the neck and the mid back and the low back, but it also has some additional variables. In addition, it causes unnatural sideways curvature of the spine, means from the front, the spine begins to curve where it should be straight. And this curvature is not limited to just bending, but it also rotates and twists from the front to, from the front to back, causing scoliosis to be a true three-dimensional problem. This rotation is always into the concavity of the curvature. So if you have two curves, one in the mid back, one in the low back, you can actually have counter rotation, meaning the thoracic spine is rotating one, one way where the lumbar spine is rotating in the opposite direction. Now, not only is there the bend and there is also the rotation, but the bend must be of a size of 10 degrees or greater measured by a Cobb angle to make sure it's actually diagnosed with scoliosis. So you can see it has many different components associated when we look at diagnosing somebody with scoliosis. The Cobb angle is the gold standard in assessing scoliosis. The Cobb angle is a measurement that's taken on a scoliosis x-ray and it's done by measuring the scoliosis from most tilted vertebra to the next most tilted vertebra. You can have multiple Cobb angles if you have multiple curves in your spine. The Cobb angle tells you how far the spine is out of alignment and how severe the scoliosis is based upon severity of mild, moderate, severe, or very severe. The more severe the curve, the more likely it is to progress and the more difficult it is to treat. The problem is scoliosis, unfortunately, is a progressive condition. It is in, in its very nature to worsen over time, particularly if it's left untreated and not treated proactively. This is why choosing the right treatment approach and the right provider to treat your scoliosis is a very important decision. In fact, it would very often leads to your outcome. Meaning if you treat a person, if you treat with a, a doctor that's uh, more surgically based, you're more likely going to end up having surgery. Or if you treat somebody, if you choose a doctor that's going to be more conservative based and try to reduce your curve without having surgery, you're more likely not going to have surgery. So your treatment provider is a very important decision because the decisions made early on in the diagnosis and treatment of scoliosis will dictate what happens in the future. And the bigger your curve becomes, the harder it is to treat with more conservative measures. So if you miss the opportunity of treating a mild scoliosis before it becomes moderate and severe, because these curves do progress from mild, moderate, severe to very severe, and every severe curve was once mild, that if you miss this opportunity, then you end up with only a surgical recommendation. As scoliosis progresses, not only can the curve become more severe, it can cause more postural deformities, it can lead to more rigidity, which makes it more complex to treat, and if it's causing any kind of symptoms like pain or malfunction, these things will also tend to increase as your scoliosis increases. So who should treat scoliosis? Well, scoliosis needs to be treated by somebody who understands the complex nature of scoliosis and what it takes to actually deal with scoliosis on a structural level. General practitioners are more likely to treat somebody with scoliosis than actually treat their scoliosis. I always say there's a very big difference between addressing the symptoms of scoliosis versus proactively addressing the underlying cause of the symptoms, which is the scoliosis itself. A doctor or a chiropractor who understands scoliosis and how it affects the body and understands how it needs to be treated and understands that the goal of treatment should be impacting scoliosis on a structural level is very imperative to have a positive outcome, especially in a conservative approach. So how does a doctor or a chiropractor treat scoliosis specifically on a structural level? Well, first of all, a doctor that's trained in scoliosis understands that we have to deal with a customized integrated treatment plan. We can't just use general therapies and general rehabilitation to help deal with scoliosis because every scoliosis is like a thumbprint. It is unique to that person and even two curves that look the same may not need the exact same type of treatment because they move different and they, are, they respond different and have different stiffness points. So chiropractic care is definitely used to help reduce the size of the unnatural curvature and it's done by adjusting the spine and dealing with the most tilted vertebra. But uh, the adjustments are normally done in a, in a scoliosis scoliosis-specific manner, meaning more to, to just try to improve pain or improve range of motion, but really with a structural approach, understanding the alignment of the vertebra and how to, to derotate them and move the spine back into a normal position. 
Physical therapy is also used, but not general physical therapy to help increase just general core strength or general uh, flexibility of the spine. It is physical, physical therapy helping to address the scoliosis curvature. So these are structural-based physical therapy that can be used to help move and, and move the spine into a more symmetrical position and help improving the flexibility of the stiff areas of the scoliosis. Scoliosis-specific exercises can also be used, but again, not just to increase back strength, but used in an asymmetrical manner to help improve the structural component associated with scoliosis. We also can use corrective bracing. Now, corrective bracing is very different than traditional bracing. Traditional bracing is just trying to hold the spine from worsening, where corrective bracing is very similar to corrective braces on your teeth. They're used to push and pull the spine into a corrective position. So the doctor has to be familiar with fitting and prescribing and designing a brace to have a corrective nature. And the last thing is home rehabilitation. All this in-office therapy and treatment works fantastic, but without specific customized home therapy and home rehabilitation and home exercises that are also prescribed asymmetrical in manner to help stabilize the scoliosis, none of these effects could be long lasting without this, this type of program. So you're looking at a doctor that has to understand the chiropractic components, has to deal with the therapeutic components, has to deal with the bracing components, the home therapy components, and also the scoliosis specific exercise components. So you can see there's a lot of components in here that have to be coordinated. What I find a lot of times when the patients are seeing multiple doctors to get all this stuff done, that the care is very fragmented and not each component isn't working with the next component. In fact, I see them a lot of times working against each other. So this all has to be coordinated by one physician to provide, make sure that everything is adding to the next to provide the very best outcome because one thing working against the others can derail the whole process. So scoliosis can be treated, even though it's progressive in nature, it's highly treatable. And the sooner you treat it, the, the more likely you are to reduce its progressive nature and the more likely you are to get a better outcome. Now, traditional treatment, like I mentioned, unfortunately tends to funnel patients towards surgery because as curves worsen, they are, they're less responsive to conservative treatment. And then the end result or the end treatment tends to be spinal fusion, which is a non-functional approach because it fuses the entire spine. It sacrifices movement and flexibility of the spine for alignment. Well, conservative chiropractic centered approach works on preventing and reducing the curve on a structural level while retaining function. So it's a functional approach, meaning we want the curve to get smaller, but while retaining function of the spine, not fusing it together. By treating scoliosis itself, rather, rather than just treating the symptoms, we can address the cause of all these symptoms, really dealing with the structural component of scoliosis and allowing the body to heal and respond in itself. And that's really the key. It, reducing the structural of the scoliosis produces the results we want, as opposed to just treating the symptoms associated with the scoliosis. So since we know scoliosis is a structural condition, it can affect the body in a wide range. And it can also have a wide range of severity levels. It can have many different types of scoliosis. We also know it's progressive in nature. We know it's complex, has a three-dimensional misalignment associated with scoliosis. So it necessitates a very customized treatment plan that offers many different modalities and a comprehensive approach to helping reduce scoliosis. It's more than just general therapy. It's more than just general chiropractic care. It's more than just general exercises. It's more than even just general bracing. You, it has to be combined in a way to produce a very specific outcome. Here at Scoliosis Reduction Center, we pride ourselves in taking all of these uh, modalities and coordinating them in a very specific manner to get a chiropractic centered approach to reduce scoliosis and retaining function of the spine and stopping the progressive nature of scoliosis. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.